What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm going to be taking you through six hidden abilities that you can get for your character in Skyrim. And for those of you who aren't sure what abilities are, they're permanent bonus effects which you can get for your character. One obvious case is getting an ability for choosing a certain race. Racial abilities aren't the only types that exist though, so in this video I plan to shed light on a bunch more. Remember to subscribe for more Skyrim content like this and for our Fallout Universe story series that we We've got coming soon. First up, we have the Agent of Debella ability. What this does is quite simple. It grants you a permanent 10% more combat damage to members of the opposite sex. It's similar to the confirmed Bachelor and Black Widow perks in Fallout. Unfortunately, however, it doesn't give you any bonus to speech checks with the other sex, but it is spoken about to you in the game as if it does do this. So 10% more damage against the opposite sex is pretty decent, but from a logical perspective, this is going to work much better for female character builds like our pirate and our Pathfinder build, as most enemies in Skyrim are male. So to get this ability, you'll have to start with the quest it involves. You can begin by talking to a filthy beggar in Markarth, known as Degain, and he wants you to steal a statue of Debella from the temple in the city. Go in and get caught, and the priestess there, known as Hamal, will give you the necessary quest to get the blessing of Debella as a punishment. The quest involves you tracking down a little girl who is the Sybil of Debella. Just go to Carthwaston and ask around, and you'll find out from Enmon that she's been kidnapped by the Forsworn and taken to Broken Tower Redoubt. Go rescue her and when you go back to the temple, simply pray at the altar of Debella and enjoy your new ability. Next up, we have an ability which is hidden all the way down in Blackreach, or at least that's where you'll start the quest to get it. This ability is called Cinderian Serendipity and what it does is give you a 25% chance to create a duplicate potion when performing alchemy. I didn't really think much of this when I played Skyrim for the first time five years ago, but upon reflection, this is actually really really beast for any alchemy characters, especially when you start making potions over and over to generate money. This will help you make roughly 25% more of that golden glory. Anyways, remember the master alchemist named Cinderian from Oblivion? Well, he's traveled to Skyrim and gone to Blackreach where you can find his skeletal remains. You need to read his field journal, which will instruct you to find 30 Crimson Nern Roots. This begins a quest called A Return to Your Roots. These Crimson Nern Roots are only found in Blackreach, so run around everywhere and and collect 30. They make the same chime sound as all Nern Roots, and if you want extra help, you can go into your audio settings and turn the music down to make this easier to hear. Once you've got all of them, you can head to Avrusa Serethi, who is located to the southwest of the Rift Watchtower at the Serethi Farm. You'll be rewarded with the Nern Root Missive Book, but more importantly, the Cinderian Serendipity Active Effect. Moving on, we actually have another ability you'll only get by talking to the right person in a temple. This ability is called the Agent of Mara and what it does is give you a permanent 15% more resistance to Magicka. If you are playing as a Breton who has a natural 25% magic resistance, this ability will bring it up to 40%. That's almost reducing incoming spell damage by half. Get the Lordstone and the Atronarch perk from Alteration and you'll be invincible against mages. To get the Agent of Mara ability, you'll need to go to the Temple of Mara in Riften and talk to the Priestess called Denia Balu. When asking for the Blessing of Mara, she'll make you earn it by giving you the quest called the Book of Love. First, you'll be sent to Iverstead, where you basically decide who a local girl is going to love. You'll end up choosing between helping her elope with a new interest to Riften, or investigating a prior love interest and revitalizing the feelings there. Then you go back to the temple and then out to Markarth to help the Dwemer researcher Calselmo. He is also having love issues and has no idea about how to speak to a woman named Faelene. You'll end up paying for a friend of hers named Ingvar to tweak a poem for Calselmo. To be about Faelene for 200 septums, and then you'll get her to read the poem and it's straightforward from there. Then you go back to the temple and you're sent out to reunite two lovers who have lost each other in death. You'll put on an amulet that you were given and travel southeast of Rorik's dead, talking to the spirit of her husband. Find her husband by heading northeast towards an open plain and bring him back. The dead people speak, then fly up into the sky and pledge their eternal love, and everyone lives happily ever after. Return to Riften and enjoy your permanent resist magicka powers. To acquire the fourth 
fourth ability on this list is something you'll want to discover if you're using any kind of build using restoration for healing purposes. It's called Sailor's Repose, and it makes all healing spells cure 10% more health. To get it, you'll want to head to Frostflow Lighthouse. By the way, I should mention that this ability also affects perks such as Avoid Death, making them also heal 10% more. The special quest is called Frostflow Abyss, and it involves you returning the bones of a dead man to be burned in the lighthouse fire. He had always told his wife that upon dying, he wanted his bones burnt in the fire so that he could continue to guide the ships after death. First, get the cellar key from within a burial urn on the mantle above the fireplace. Then go down in the cellar and go through the opening in the far wall. You'll keep going through areas and fighting Falma and Chorus the whole time, so do not come here at a low level or you will die. After entering Frostflow Abyss and killing the enemies, find Manny's remains and head on through the next passageway until you find a fenced-in area where Sudi's body is along with the bloodstained note and scrawled page. Keep exploring until you find a hole in the floor which you'll jump down in an area with heaps of Chorus and a Chorus Reaper who must be killed. You'll take the remains of Habd from the corpse as well as the key to go back up to the top of the lighthouse and chuck it in the fire. You can now enjoy healing spells curing 10% more so long as you didn't die in the process. Up next, we've got the Dragon Infusion ability. This not only sounds cool, but it really is easy to get and it's pretty decent. What it does is cause dragons to do 25% less melee damage against you. And while this isn't exactly groundbreaking, it's still quite useful and in many cases, life-saving on the highest difficulties. You will need to have completed the Rebuilding the Blades quest, after which Delphine will tell you to talk to Esben about doing some dragon hunting. Esben has found a dragon lair and sent you to kill the dragon, accompanied by new Blades recruits. It's very simple, and after you kill the dragon, he'll tell you about his dragon research. He wants you to bring him some dragon scales and some dragon bones. Bring him one of each and you'll complete the task. He then makes you a potion which you drink, granting you the permanent ability, which is Dragon Infusion. It's super simple, and it's a nice effect to carry around for the rest of your playthrough. Finally, we have the unique ability known as Ancient Knowledge. This one's in a hidden quest that takes you far into some Dwemer ruins. What the ability does is give you a 25% armor rating bonus bonus when wearing Dwarven armor, and your smithing skill will increase 15% faster. The smithing increase is incredibly useful, and you don't have to be wearing Dwarven armor to get it. Also, if you stack this with a Warrior Stone, you'll be leveling up smithing even faster than that. The Dwarven boost is pretty nice too, especially if you want to create a character like our Mechanist build, who will be wearing it as their endgame gear. Fully upgraded, it'll be slightly stronger than fully upgraded Ebony. To begin the necessary quest, known as Unfathomable Depths, you'll need to head to the dock area outside of Riften and be level 14. Here an Argonian can be found wandering around known as From Deepest Fathoms. When you talk to her, you'll realize how paranoid and edgy she is. She desperately wants to give you a lexicon and she will beg that you return it to the Dwemer Ruin known as Avanchisil. When you go heal, you'll meet up with ghosts and need to fight your way through the various corridors and rooms within. Eventually, you'll enter the boiler and you'll want to keep moving forward until you reach the receptacle. There will be a Dwarven Centurion guarding it, but after you defeat it, activate the receptacle and the lexicon will be removed. You'll be rewarded with the ancient knowledge ability and the quest will be completed. Subscribe to Fudge Mup to get more Skyrim videos and like the video if you learned something new. Thanks so much for watching six hidden abilities in Skyrim and be sure to share this video with your Skyrim loving friends if they're in the middle of or beginning a new playthrough. We really love making videos like this and we really appreciate your support. Social media links are in the description. My name is Scott and I'll nerd out with you again very soon.